Hi, the SI Meteorologist, Paul Dorian here on Monday, November 18th. What a powerful cold front crossed the Ohio Valley yesterday, has reached the East Coast right now. That strong cold front caused severe weather from the Mississippi River Valley all the way to the Appalachians. Numerous tornadoes, some reports now uh, indicating perhaps 70 or 80 tornadoes were reported during the day yesterday. Most of those tornadoes in the western part of the Ohio Valley, uh, places like Illinois and western Indiana. But again, there was a severe weather outbreak yesterday associated with this powerful cold front that has now reached the east coast. Colder air is flooding into the Midwest and the Northeast during the day today on strong uh, northwest winds. Here's some of the storm reports going into uh, the NOAA Severe Storms Center all the way from the Mississippi River, which is right in this region right here, to the Appalachian Mountains for the most part. The red indicate tornado reports, and again, most of those occurred uh, in Illinois, western Kentucky, western Indiana. That line weakened as it crossed the Appalachian Mountains and reached the I-95 corridor early this morning with some heavy rain, some strong winds, but certainly nothing near the strength that that squall line had yesterday in the Ohio Valley. Again, that front is now moving off the east coast and colder air is sweeping into this entire region and it'll be way below normal for the next couple of days. Of course, it was quite mild ahead of the front, so that clash of air masses with the colder air pouring in from the north and west combined with the very warm and somewhat humid air to the south and east causes severe weather outbreak during the day uh, yesterday. And here's the current surface map, that cold front now right along the east coast, uh, clearing skies here up and down the I-95 corridor following the band of some uh, heavy rain showers about two or three hours ago. Winds will increase over the next several hours from D.C. up to New York City. A noticeable increase in the winds as we get to the latter part of the morning and certainly this afternoon as that colder air pours in from the north and west. Temperatures will rise somewhat over the next few hours, but will tend to start dropping off during the afternoon hours after reaching mild levels at the midday, but the colder air will pour in, and that will kind of negate any of the afternoon sunshine that is expected. And by tonight, it will be noticeably colder. Temperatures way down in the 30s along the I-95 car in the next two days. Tuesday and Wednesday will certainly be back to well below normal levels for this time of the year. Here's the latest infrared satellite loop from the Wisconsin website. Main action is this uh, low clouds now over the Great Lakes as the colder air pours in over the still warm, relatively warm Great Lakes. Band of clouds now moving off the east coast here. Uh, some of the higher uh, clouds here noticeable here. Some showers and thunderstorms as that colder air moves uh, into uh, off the east coast. Clearing skies for the most part south and east of the Appalachian Mountains, and there will be plenty of sunshine in D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City from midday on through the afternoon. But the winds will become quite noticeably strong as the colder air pours in. Well, let's take a look at some computer uh, forecast maps. This is from last night's Zero Z GFS model run. We'll look at tonight, tomorrow night, and then Wednesday night. We've kind of been in a pattern for the last few weeks where we get cold for a few days and it gets warmer for a few days and then back to colder for another few days. That pattern will repeat this week. Again, it looks like we'll be way below normal on Tuesday and Wednesday, tra transition day on Thursday, back to milder conditions for Friday, but then more cold air moves in over the weekend. Well, here's the forecast map for this evening, that front way off the coast by this time. Colder air riding in on strong northwest winds. Some uh, snow shower activity up over the Great Lakes region should not uh, affect south and east of the Appalachian Mountains here in southeastern Pennsylvania or northern Maryland or Virginia. Um, the colder air will definitely be noticeable by late in the afternoon, especially tonight. Temperatures dropping into the 30s in most I-95 corridor locations. <clears throat> Well, by tomorrow night, that Canadian high pressure is centered over the eastern Great Lakes. And notice already some warmer air moving in over the middle part of the country on, uh, on the back side of that high pressure system. Again, this is kind of the same pattern we've had over the last few weeks where we get cold for a few days. Then the high pressure responsible for that cold air shifts to off the east coast and we get into the southwesterly milder flow on the back side of the high. Same thing will happen later this week following cold days on Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's now jump ahead to the Wednesday evening forecast map. 
And here we go again by Wednesday evening. That high is starting to make its move to the east coast, and then it'll shift off the coast already. Southwesterly flow or southerly flow in the Ohio Valley and over the Appalachian Mountains, bringing in somewhat milder air. We'll stay cold on Wednesday. Thursday will be still chilly, kind of the transition day to milder weather on uh, Friday. But then cold air is already starting to set up for the weekend here. By this time, this is Wednesday evening's forecast map, another Canadian high pressure showing up on the map here in the southwestern part of Canada. This colder air continues to move south and east. Looks like another cold air mass moving into the mid-Atlantic region this weekend. So that's it for now for the SIWeather.com. I'm the SI meteorologist, Paul Dorian.